Whew, the red carpet. Hi, I'm Darren. If any, of you, if any of you work out the VDB, just um, tweet it to me. I'll tell you if you're right, yeah? <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, I'm still Darren. I'll be Darren for the rest of this talk. And I'm talking today on, um, oh, I'm going to give you three tools. Um, motivation, mechanics, and fun. So for those of you who missed it, I'm going to give you three tools. Mechanics, motivation, and fun. If you missed it, three tools. Mechanics, motivation, and fun. Okay, and what I do is I tend to put those three tools into a toolbox and I call that toolbox gamification. And for those of you who think what gamification is, I'm very excited. Um, but I'll tell you what I think it is. Okay, um, gamification is the new black. For all our stylish people out there, you always got a little black number. Yeah, guys, maybe, hopefully not, maybe not. Um, yes, and at the end of my talk, you can find out which type of black you actually have. Ooh. Okay, so without further ado, um, this is one of my most epic slides of all time. Okay, what we have here is um, two little puppies who are extremely motivated and having a lot of fun. But I said I'll tell you about three things. How about that? The mechanics. What's actually going on is in their fun and in their motivation, there is a heck of a lot of learning going on in terms of who's heavier, Who's stronger? Which angle can I get the ear better? How do we pull it all together? Okay? And then this is where most learning and most performance takes place in terms of what you expect of people and what you expect of the workplace. The community, your kids. Anybody ever try to get your kids to wash dishes? <laughs> Not overly the most fun chore in the world, is it? Okay, so maybe there is hope for this talk today. All right, so... Um, have a look. Okay, so um, nothing like a good video to um, lose 2,000 calories in the space of a minute and a half. Interesting. Okay, so um, the reason why I showed you that is I'm going to talk back to that video, as well as probably show you another one later, maybe, depending on how you want to act and engage. It's one quite important. Um, what I want to position for you at the moment is what is. Okay, so gamification, and I, you can read the slide and I'll read it to you as well. It's got a cool screen here. Gamification is not a game. All right, has anybody heard of the game? I use, this, I use this kind of quite often, the game Solitaire. Yeah. Isn't, isn't it just the most intriguing game that you can't wait to play ever? It's like the most amazing game, maybe? No. Anybody want to venture how many times, give or take, Solitaire has been played online? Ballpark. Guess, you won't be wrong. Ah, oh, good call, 40 billion, who was that? Well done. 40 billion times, give or take. Anyone want to venture the general time of the day that Solitaire's played? Office hours between eight and four. So, the fact that Solitaire isn't the most overly engaging and fun, innovative game that you could ever play is far more engaging than your current job. Okay, makes you wonder. Now, gamification 
is an activity that one engages with for amusement. Okay, so you can just let your minds go wherever they want to go. That's a game. All right, according to the very clever people who define games. Um, fun is what motivates you to stay engaged. So there's a separation. Solitaire, not a huge fun aspect to it unless you're at work, it seems. Okay? Now, what gamification is. Gamification is what it uses the stuff that makes games fun. Okay? So it uses that stuff and applies it measurably in non-gaming environments, like workplaces, um, um, green, going green, decrease your electricity. There's hundreds of case studies of what, of what it does and where it works. And what it does is it engages your players. There's four types of players, and they're all their own type of black. Hinton, nudge, nudge. Okay. All right. So let's have a look at it. Why do we need gamification? Stats recently out, about a week old, <laughs> which makes them pretty new. They're probably outdated by now then. Um, in the world, globally, on average, about 55% of the workforce is engaged in what they do. So for every 100 people that do their job, 35 people are actually engaged in their job. And this is not limited to level, and it's not limited to designation in terms of, or all CEOs are fully engaged in their jobs. No, not really. That's why CEOs also lose, uh, leave sorry, their jobs. Okay? 22% are, they, they eight to five, they come to work, they get their pay, slips, pay salaries, they go home, that's why they're there. Everyone's happy-ish. Take it from there. 17% are detached. You know, they, they spend more time at the coffee dispenser than they do at the desk. And a whopping, whopping 26% of employees are actively involved in Facebook and Twitter in their offices during the day instead of doing their job. And of course, the funniest thing that happens in is companies then ban them from Facebook and Twitter, or we ban our kids from Facebook and Twitter on computers because nobody has a smartphone with Facebook or Twitter on it. Of course not. I mean, how, how do we engage in? Okay. Now, if you want to bring this a little bit to more to where we are, uh, and I'm still positioning the why gamification is important, this is the Africa stats. And if you look at South Africa, only 9%, tell them I say, how's it? <laughs> Sorry, the phone's ringing, and I think it's for me, because so, it's all about me. Um, all right, so, so South Africa is engaged at about 9%, which means that 9 out of every 100 employees are engaged in their jobs. If any of you own a company with employees, and there's two of you, <laughs> One of you engaged and one of you is not. And if you own the company, you do the maths. Um, okay, which is quite a frightening stat. And generally, there's a thousand reasons why it comes down to the fact I am not engaged because it's not fun. Okay, yeah, but can we have fun at work? And I'll show you how we can have fun at work in a moment. 46% of the people are not engaged. So at least we kind of get over the 50% barrier in the workplace and we limp along. 45% of our employees are actively disengaged. Come on. I mean, you think you have troubles in, with, with areas in South Africa. How about that? 45% for every half of your people just don't perform. Half of your kids don't engage in school. Half of your scouts don't engage in, in, in scouts. You pick, pick your community. Half of the people are actively disengaged. In fact, there's enough research to show that loyalty programs, you know those funky, awesome loyalty programs that take you to your favorite shopping malls and stuff? Yeah, only about 46% of the people are actively involved in a loyalty program. That's, that's very low, if anyone's wondering. It's not very good, you know, because then it, it's what called, people then do what's called mercenary loyalty. And mercenary loyalty means if you offer me milk at a Rand 50 cheaper, I'll come to you. Okay, Ooh, don't worry, it's not all that bad, just some stats. All right. Um, okay, so this is a really cool picture. It actually depicts me and my wife. <laughs> yeah, English is a funny language. <laughs> we, we, we both speak it. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, play and fun is as vital to your brain for creativity, performance, and problem solving as what sleep is. Okay, so put into perspective, how often do you sleep? Pretty much once a day. Anywhere between, well, sometimes more clearly. <laughs> Excluding the power naps. Hey? <laughs> They're sleeping because they know how important it is to their brain. 
So if you don't sleep for a long period of time, you get grumpy and all those beautiful things. Because sleep reju 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 rejuvenates your brain at night and it does all those neurological scientific things which you'd have to research because I don't know it all in detail. But play has the same effect on your brain as sleep. So by not playing, you're actually depriving your brain of its ability to create, of its ability to problem solve, and of its ability to perform. Who well, we can't play in the workplace? That's just not... <clears throat> who does that? Gamification people make that happen. Because what we do is, there are eight different expressions of fun. There are five different types of play. So play is not just about sitting down, throwing balloons around, unless it's for, for a very specific reason. Fun is not just about frolicking you know, at, at, the, at the beach, although that is fun and that is cool. There is a way of figuring out how to do it, and that's for a whole different discussion. But it's very important that both sides of your brain are engaged, and we live in a society that we teach our kids from the first moment they're born to focus on the analytical side of the brain, because that's where all the paychecks come from, generally. You know, the arts are good, but they're, they're not so well paid, they're not so, and then, oh my gosh, my kid wants to become an actor. <laughs> you know, why do they become accountants? You know, I'm not, not knocking accountants, please, that's not what I'm saying, I'm not knocking actors either. But generally in the society that we're built for, we're built for a left brain society, which is why so many kids don't hack school as we know it. And that's why education is in such a mess. Well, one of the many reasons. Okay, so, let's mosey on. So this is gamification, the how. Okay, how does this all work out? Well, the first thing is all about engagement. And engagement comes from motivation. Now, there are five drivers of motivation. And this is one of the M's, motivation. That's like, autonomy, mastery, purpose, social engagement, and progression. Okay, can you say it backward? No, I'm joking. All right, autonomy. I choose to do it. I am in control of me and I choose. Richard Branson recently, did anybody read what he just did for his company of 138 people? Anybody read that? Hey? Unlimited leave. Oh, come on. When can I start working for that company? Man, <laughs> that'd be fun. <laughs> Why? Because he knows that motivation comes from autonomy and when you choose when you want to work, you will do more in that time than me forcing you to come on a Monday to a Friday to work. Okay? Second part of motivation. Autonomy moves to mastery. You achieve something at the end. You're working towards an end goal. And 13th checks, my friends, are no longer an end goal. Okay? They actually push people away from performance. There goes your performance management system. All right. Autonomy, mastery, purpose. I'm a part of something far bigger than I am. So you will find which is the most intriguing thing, and a lot of research is showing that companies that involve their people on projects that deal with eradi eradicating cancer or helping children as the company as a whole, and where people can get involved in any way they choose, actually increases productivity. In fact, a company in America, what they did was they went to their staff and said, you're all going to get 13th checks at the end of this year, but you may not keep it. You have to give your 13th check away. You may not keep your 13th check. You have to give it away. And we, will pro, and we will pro rata your performance on your 13th check so you could get a 14th check. What they found was productivity actually increased with the fact that I could give away my 13th check to someone that I felt was valuable for it. There was a, there was a purpose involved in that. Profound. That's not my research. I'm just passing it on to you because it's real. All right. So you've got Tony Mastery, purpose, social engagement. We are in a social revolution. Industrial revolution happened about 230 odd years ago. We then went through a knowledge revolution, and we've been through a technological revolution, and we've been through a whole three or four other revolutions, and now we're in a social revolution. Who's checked their phone in the past five minutes? <laughs> That's called FOMO, by the way. It's, it's, and it's actually a behavioral problem or thing. FOMO, fear of? Missing out. Mm -hmm. And that's a great gamification mechanic that we use with our people because you know what? If people are afraid of missing out, they engage more. I will never read that company policy. Are you the only can whole company? Did you not see? Uh, psychology. All right. Social. Use the social to your advantage. 
That's how Facebook started. It started as a social platform within a university and then got other universities all upset and jealous. Okay, and the last one is uh, progress. Progress is different to mastery. Progress is level ups. I achieve a certain, I'm working towards a mastery skill, um, qualification, output, you know, but there are level ups in that process and that's what's called, that's what's called progress. And I, I can see it, I get a quick reward for it, whatever that would be, and I win. Okay, it's about engagement. It's based on feedback. Has anybody ever drawn cash out of an ATM? Yeah, and all of you with your phones are going to answer the next question. What happens when you get your cash and your card back? An SMS. An SMS. What's more scary for you? No SMS or no um, receipts out the ATM? What's more scary? No SMS. Oh my gosh, it doesn't matter that the that this paper doesn't come out. No SMS because we are now a culture that relies on immediate feedback. Yet, how often do you tell kids how well they're doing? How often do you get a performance review? Once every six months, which is based on last week's performance, not the last six months. How often does any feedback in terms of what's valuable to you and what you're doing, or, vice, or the people that, that deal back with you, come to being? Not very often. That's the problem. See, what gamification does, part of the mechanics of gamification, is we build these feedback loops that keep people engaged continually, where they want to and they not want to. Now, in terms of feedback, there are four types of rewards. Now, I'm going through a lot of stuff here I do understand, but you can get the video. It'll be online in a couple of days, I think it was. <laughs> so, hopefully it'll be online. Um, okay, the reward side is split into four categories. You've got, it is spelled SAPS, S-A-P-S, -S, and it's not South African Police Service. The first S is, um, and it's starting from the top, and that is status. Status is the number one reward that you can offer someone that costs the least amount of money and is least expensive to sustain. Status. I'm ahead of, I am seen by. How could that be? Well, the person who drives the Porsche, the Ferrari, the Lamborghini can't exactly walk around showing their bank statement. <laughs> so they put the badge on, they put the status badge on. It's another way of boasting about how well I do. Oh, I'm, I'm too modest, I don't do that. Perhaps. I'm not, I'm not saying whether you do or don't, that's not the point here. Status. Then we've got access to stuff or to in engagement and access, and I've got one minute left. Access is all about, um, it's less expense, it's, it's more expensive than status, less sustainable, okay, and a little bit more difficult to, to do. All right? S-A-P, power, I get more power to do something. Again, it's more expensive than access, less sustainable, and a shorter motivational time. And the last one is stuff. Everything you are rewarded with, absolutely everything. Your increase on your credit card, the rewards from your loyalty programs that you get, the, the, the extra milk you can buy, it's all stuff. That's a big black hole. Because you know what, if I give you a free milk today, a free milk tomorrow is, really? That's not fun anymore. I want a milk and a cream. Okay, friends, I've spoken about the industrial revolution, the social revolution, and fun, the 10 expressions of fun. Okay, I'm not going to go through those now, because I'll only get to the first one, and then we'll be out of fun. Okay, so, true to my promise, one more video, if that's okay, and one more slide, and then I'm done. Uh, can you start that video? Sorry, this just gave us hassle earlier. See if you can see.
Okay, so if you watch that video at home, look for the Autonomy Mastery Purpose, Social and Progress, look for SAPs, and you can get a bit of a feel for what's going on gamification, and if you want to know a little bit more about you, bonus fun for those of you on your phones at the moment, go to g-africa.co, it's .co, not .coza, there's no za on the end of that, and um, see what happens, and just, you know, see what type of black you are. Cool, thank you.